This video is on polar code uh, that was developed for ships that intend to navigate in polar regions. And in this video, I'll talk about the essential elements of the polar code. So in polar regions, uh, in addition to the harsh and extreme climate, navigational idiosyncrasies of the region make it a challenging task to navigate a vessel in these regions. The polar code was developed by the International Maritime Organization or the IMO and its proper name is the International Code of Safety of Ships in Polar Waters. The aim of the polar code was to assist the ships operating in polar waters to meet the appropriate standards of maritime safety and pollution prevention. It is derived from existing national systems as a result of increased use of polar waters as shipping routes in areas for science and resource development and an important part of the global ecosystem. The code intends to facilitate future research and development in the area and uh, polar class ships to be strengthened for sea and glacial ice. The principles of the polar code include safety of navigation and prevention of pollution, design, outfitting and crewing of ships with trained personnel, takes into account the polar conditions like sea and glacial ice, uh, discusses the additional demands on ship systems when ship transit the polar waters, talks about the human factor element that includes training and operational procedures, and uh, ships that are operating under the code should carry a sufficient number of certified ICE navigators to guide all operations when ICE is present. Basic requirements for construction, life-saving appliances, firefighting appliances, navigational systems, pollution prevention, etc. to be taken from the relevant convention are also discussed in the code and the additional standards in the polar code have been developed to mitigate additional risks imposed due to harsh environmental and climatic conditions. Whenever possible, these standards are based on actual operating experience in polar waters. System of polar classes to designate different levels of capability have also been included. So the International Association of Classification Society or IACS has also developed a set of unified requirements for vessels of polar class in addition to the general class rules. So these or other requirements could be the basis of issuing a document of compliance or a DOC indicating the compliance with the polar code. The polar code, however, does not infringe on the national system of shipping control. The layout of the code includes a general requirements, construction requirements, outfit and equipment requirements, discusses about the operational and crewing requirements. Uh, all the parts and chapters apply to polar class ships only. Part A of the code discusses the construction requirements applying to new ship and existing ice class vessels were granted conditional equivalent class. The maximum seasonal limit of polar waters is about classified as 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. Part B of the code discuss the life-saving appliances and firefighting appliances requirements. Part A of the code discuss the adequate hull strength required to withstand additional loads due to flooding. Talked about materials required to have adequate ductility, so any materials used in the ice navigation to have adequate ductility. The intact stability in ice was described as a 30 kg per meter square on exposed weather decks and gangways and 15 kg per meter square for lateral area above the water line of the ship site. For timber carriers, uh, for the upper surface of the deck timber and the lateral resistance of timber above the bulwarks, the icing allowance was stripped. Vessel to be always in a positive state of equilibrium. A minimum GM was classified as 15 centimeters and a line 15 centimeter below the edge of the freeboard deck to be not submerged. Navigation requirements uh, were classified as uh, two speed and distance measuring devices to be available on such ships. There should be two independent echo sounders 
uh, electronic position fixing system should be available gps or glone has to be fitted where unreliable coverage of hyperbolic systems exist automatic identification systems or ais should be available two searchlights controlled from the conning position on the bridge should be available as well a manually operated red flashing light visible from the stern to indicate that the ship is stopped with the minimum visibility of 2 miles should be found as well uh, hull stress indicators on bridge should be available for pc1 and pc3 class ships uh, voyage data recorders for pc1 to pc5 class ships should be available so the classes are pc1 2 3 4 5 6 7 from pc1 to pc7 class ships are available and ice routing equipment to be available on ships as well Part of the code also talked about the anchoring systems to have independent means of securing the anchor in its stored position so that anchor cables can be used in an emergency. Uh, an additional line throwing apparatus should be carried other than what is required normally as per the SOLAS. Uh, an emergency towing arrangement should be also provided on the ship both forward and aft and the machinery should not be susceptible to any kind of brittle fracture that it can experience in these operating conditions. Polar classes were classified as PC1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 as I said before uh, where PC1 uh, was a uh, ships that can uh, carry out year-round operation in all polar waters whereas PC-7 then becomes ships that can carry out operation in the summer and autumn region open in thin first year ice only with old ice inclusions and the middle ships are all in between range of these two. The document of compliance is issued if the ships show compliance with the requirements of the code and it is issued after an initial or also after a renewal survey to a ship complying with the part A and B of the code. The validity of the document of compliance is less than or equal to five years, depending on the flag state, of course. In terms of ice navigators, so initially I mentioned that these ships should be carrying ice navigators. So all ships other than those in ice-free waters should carry at least one ice navigator. The ice navigator is someone who holds an international ice navigator certificate issued by the relevant flag state with a validity of at least five years. The ICE Navigator actually involves a training that includes 30 days at least as a deck watchkeeper on a ship that was underway or making way in the polar ice. In fact, underway and making way, not or over. Uh, level one ICE watchkeeper should do a course study of the ICE navigation as well. So once you have all these courses done, then you are issued with an ICE navigator certificate. Ships navigating in polar waters should make a daily report to their administration or flag state giving the position of the ship and the condition of the ship. Class PC1 to PC4 that is 2 and 3 as well vessels to have a block and tackle arrangement to remove the propeller bed if it gets damaged in ice. Finally in terms of training as many as possible of the ship's officers and crew should attend an approved cold water survival course. So this video summarized the polar code and the requirements of the code for you guys. Of course, you can go and get the code yourself and go through the whole code. But the idea here is for me to summarize the code for you so that you can write about it in the exams or answer questions in the oral assessments if asked about this topic.